And so that was how I survived my first hunt in the tribe. She said, spearing the fish head on a fork and chomping down hard enough to make me worried about the fork. Do you like to hunt? Mm, not much. Um, most of the time is taken up by working in my mortuary. The woman was beautiful. Pale skin that shimmered a little in the light overhead. Long platinum hair that fell in a braid just below her, um... Well, not that I noticed. Expertly crafted ass. And a body that didn't stop. She was something called a moon elf whatever that was, and she had shown up to our date with a bow and a little package of venison. She ordered my steak for me, and damn if it just wasn't the way that I liked it, although ordering for me was something that I wasn't used to. As she was eating, her demeanor seemed to lack emotion, and her words were sort of hollow as she went on telling me about her accomplishments as I tried to get a word in. No, I was being kind. She was actually bragging, and I was just being polite. Well, we should go hunting together. As the first hunter for my tribe, I need to make sure you'll be an adequate mate and father to our children. I nearly spit into my Dr. Pepper. Uh, it might be a little too early to talk about children. Why? Did you require a longer courtship? My people do not often court for longer than a week before marriage. Betrothals are for children, and those who wish to test the bonds of their intended, I suppose. However, we could plan a spring wedding if you- Wait, 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 I said, holding up a hand. This is our first date. I'm not trying to move quite that quickly. Jay Keen, the woman I had only swiped right on a few days ago, looked at me skeptically before rising and just shaking her head. They told me humans move faster than this. I will need to be with child before spring, so I cannot wait for you to decide. Contact me when you require a serious companion. And so she didn't just storm out, but she did leave me with the bill, which was pretty annoying. We hadn't talked about going Dutch, but I mean, who expects someone to pay for their fish heads on the first date? I paid the tab, which was a little more than I expected, and got my leftovers bagged for later. I was walking out when my phone chirped and I looked down to find a pleasant surprise. Sara had a new profile picture, her hair a light brown instead of green, and the message that she had sent me was a welcome distraction. Hey, sorry to disappear for a while, family matters. How are you? Oh, just having dinner by myself here. Yeah? I'm surprised such an eligible bachelor is still on the market. I raised an eyebrow at that. I'd never really thought of myself in those terms, but I suppose maybe others had. Well, I guess I just haven't found a good match yet. I climbed in my car, started the engine, just as she has sent me a reply. Well, my calendar has freed up substantially. Would you be interested in meeting up? We don't have to call it a date. We can call it an actual introduction, if you'd like. I thought about it, and decided that that would be nice. I hadn't had a lot of luck lately, but that wasn't to say that I hadn't been going on a lot of dates. Monster Mash was proving to be as flaky as Tinder these days, and I was honestly getting ready to cancel my subscription. Now, that wasn't to say that I hadn't been enjoying myself because I had, but I was looking for something more serious. An actual girlfriend not just a one-night stand. Apparently, someone had told the girls that I had matched with that humans either wanted to be locked down within a very short period of time, or they just wanted to fall into bed and, and slip off come dawn. Some of it was understandable, I guess. Many of these girls looked at me the way that humans look at mayflies. When you live for centuries, or indefinitely, it's easy to see a human as a fleeting thing with their 50 to 80 years of life. They want to lock you down quick because they might blink and, and you'll be gone. Zara didn't seem like that, though, and it was kind of refreshing. Uh-oh, did I scare you off? I realized I had been wool-gathering for a while and shook my thoughts off. Yeah, <laughs> that would be great. I kind of hoped that I'd get to meet you properly. Great! Are you free Friday? Dinner at Luigi's? I mentally went through my calendar and I realized that I would be free Friday afternoon, so that worked. Friday sounds great. Say, seven? 
Make it eight and it's a date, handsome. I started to drive then, but her last message had me smiling even more. Can't wait. Well, it looked like I had a little something to look forward to then. I put my car in drive and I headed home. Glad that it was Wednesday so I wouldn't have to wait too long. Despite how dismally these dates had been going lately, I was pretty excited about getting to meet Sara at long last. The few minutes that we had spent texting each other at the event a few months ago had stood out, and I think that I had been hoping that she would message me back. I had been stopping myself from messaging her, not wanting to seem too forward, but now I was kicking myself for hesitating. It appeared that I wasn't the only one who remembered our little text session. And as I drove home, I thought again how Friday couldn't get here soon enough. So what are you wearing Friday? I jumped a little as my pocket vibrated, and I pulled it out and I tried to covertly text her back. I had sent her my phone number so she wouldn't need to rely on the app for communication, and we had been texting since yesterday. It was nice. Made it feel officially somehow since she was the first person on Monster Mash that I had given my phone number to. Uh, I don't know, uh, khakis, uh, a polo, I guess? Yeah, but what color, Jake from State Farm? I don't want to wear spring green and have you come in looking like a storm cloud. I don't know. I, I think I have a forest green polo. Uh, are you planning on wearing spring green? I don't know. I wear a lot of green. It's kind of my color. And now we invite our host to wield the ceremonial dagger to end the reign of Princess Stellar and usher his soul as the burning wastes. I guess I could wear something that matches. I have a nice army green one. Mortician. The dagger? Also, I'm pretty sure it'll match and it won't clash too much with you. Well, as long as it doesn't. Excuse me. Are we boring you? I looked up guiltily and I found no less than a congregation of vaguely human reptile people assembled around a stone altar that I had totally remembered to put a tarp under this time, and staring at me with anger and expectation. Oh right, I was hosting a funeral for snake people. The proper term was reptoids, as I had been informed several times since there were also frog people and lizard people in the mix, but all the ones here were snake people for sure. They were paying me a lot of hiss tokens, which Louis had rolled his eyes at and said that they were about the monster world equivalent of pesos. So he hoped that there were a lot of zeros behind the number to conduct the funeral, and the least I could do was pay attention. They all looked so dapper in their Victorian-era coats and petticoats, and it was just a little hard to take it all seriously. Uh, right, right, the uh, ceremonial knife. I said, taking it out from under my armpit and coming forward. I made the proper cut and said the words that they told me to say. And when a collective hiss went up from the crowd, they all went to the little room off of the fellowship hall to eat mice and drink tea. I plucked up my phone and checked Sara's text. Well, as long as it doesn't clash too badly, look for me at a back booth. I smiled, sending back that it sounded good to me. I was still smiling and texting an hour later when I came up to see what mom was scrounging up for dinner. With our money troubles a thing of the not-so-distant past, we were back to eating like upper-middle-class people, despite the hamburger helper cooking on the stove. It was stroganoff, though, if that makes it sound any classier. Smells great, mom, I said, taking the plates from the cabinet and setting the table for two. It was the usual evening ritual. She cooked and I set the table. The work wasn't an adequate trade-off, but it made me feel like I was doing something at least. The table sat, I took my seat, and I chuckled as I sent Sara a text back. She'd sent me some memes, so I had to find a good one to send back, and it took me a moment to realize that there was food on my plate, and Mom was smiling down at me with the hot skillet in her hand. Uh, what? I asked, smiling despite not understanding. I take that your date went well last night. You've been on your phone ever since. 
Any chance that I'll get to meet this young lady? Uh, oh, I said, realizing what she was talking about. No, it, it actually went terribly. But I met someone a few months ago, and she just got back in touch with me. We've been trying to set up something for tomorrow, actually. Mom sat down across from me, leaning her chin against her folded hands as she smiled knowingly. Kind of sounds like you're excited to meet this girl. I hissed as the very hot pasta burned my tongue. Oh, well, yeah, I, I guess I am. Um, I've been hoping that she would get back in touch with me, but I didn't want to reach out and make her uncomfortable, so I just kind of kept on hoping. Son, if you want things in life, sometimes you have to take a chance. Don't let opportunities pass you by because you feel like it might not be the right time. If your father had hesitated, then you might not have been born at all. How did you even dad meet? I asked, testing the food before committing to a bite. I don't think that you ever even told us. Mom seemed a little surprised by the question, or maybe her food was just really too hot because she choked a little on the bite. Oh, um, well, that, that was a long time ago. I... She weighed her options and seemed to decide to tell me. I had left my family home. I don't really get along with them, hence why you've never met any of them. They're very... She thought about the right word as she took another bite. R religious, I suppose, and I didn't want to live like that. So I left. And as I was walking up the road, your father happened to drive by. He had been driving your grandfather's hearse to go pick up a body, and when he saw me, I was too scared of the sight of the car to run. You were scared? I asked, talking through a mouthful of sauce. Well, yes, it was the middle of the night, and a funeral hack had just come out of the dark. You'd be a little creeped out too, I would wager. Well, then it stopped beside me, and the face that looked out as the window rolled down was the last thing that I could have expected. Oh, your father was very handsome. And he smiled and asked if I needed a ride. He said that he was heading to Puce, and he'd be glad to take me that far. I was still a little hesitant, but I agreed and decided to ride with him for a while. He was very charming, telling me how he worked at Garvey Funeral Home with his father and that it had been in the family for generations. He asked where I was from and where I was heading, and he asked me my name. And... Oh my. We hit it off almost at once. Just like that? I asked, surprised. Just like that, Mom repeated. When we got to Puce, he asked where I was staying, and I told him I honestly didn't have a place or any money or anything besides the clothes on my back. He took me to the funeral home, and your grandmother fussed over me a little and got me some clothes and told me that I could stay till I was back on my feet. Your grandfather blustered some, but she told him to hush and go mind his corpses. <laughs> your grandmother was a heck of a woman, and she ran her home with an iron fist. Your father came to see me later that night, and we sat and talked until dawn. I think he felt it too, that we were meant to be together. I stayed with them for a while, the two of us courting, and when he asked if I would marry him, I couldn't think of anything else to say but yes. It was the best decision in my life. It gave me you kids, this house, and this comfortable life. I got to lay beside the love of my life for 33 great years, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. I wouldn't have had the opportunity, however, if I hadn't swallowed my fear and got into his car that night. Sometimes, Tyler, my love, you have to take a chance if it's something that you really want. I nodded, smiling, as I thought about Mom's story. Mom had, of course, taken a much bigger risk than me. If Dad had turned out to be a weirdo or a serial killer, neither of us would be having this conversation anyway. But Dad had turned out to be alright, and they had a cute love story from it. Maybe it would be like that with Sara and I. Stranger things had happened. I wasn't sure I had felt this instant connection that she was talking about, but... I thought maybe that I had felt something similar. I put my plate in the sink, kissed mom on the top of her head, and went to get my clothes ready for tomorrow. Had to make sure that the green went with my khakis, after all.
Sir, would you like to go ahead and order? I was sitting in Luigi's, nibbling bread as I waited for Sara. It wasn't so late. Only about 15 minutes. It was too early to call it a wash, right? I totally hadn't been stood up, uh, right? Sir? I looked up, realizing the waitress had come back and nearly dropped my breadstick in my water. No, no, uh, I'm okay. Um, just a little longer. I'm sure she just stuck in traffic. The waitress gave me a smile and said, I'm sure that she is, and went about her business. No way Sara would stand me up. We had talked about 30 minutes before I'd left for the date. She had said that her mother had stopped by for a visit and that she would be leaving on time for the date. I had nothing to worry about. I was just being neurotic. I picked up my piece of breadstick and chewed a little. People beginning to give me looks of sympathy when they saw that I was still sitting alone. I picked up my phone and I typed a little text but decided to erase it again. She wouldn't show up at all if she got into a car wreck or wound up in the hospital. Imagine telling our kids about that. Well, your mother and I had our first date in the ER after I sent her a text and she crashed her car trying to check it. Well, I said, pumping my own brakes. Where did that come from? I was thinking about kids and we hadn't even gotten on a single date yet. Get it together, Tyler. Start to lose it, buddy. I checked my watch. 25 minutes late. Well, I'd been stood up. That's all there was to it. I might as well leave. I should leave and just stop embarrassing myself. She wasn't coming and why should she? What did I have to offer? What did I- Tyler? She called and I looked up to find myself staring at this, this goddess. Apparently she had her hair up the last time that I had seen her because now her muddy brown hair fell to right above her butt and the color was definitely more of a warm, wet mud. Her dress was very green, a dark green like a pine tree, and the heels that she wore gave her a few more inches. Her makeup and jewelry looked minimal, and when she smiled at me, I saw a crest kid smile from between her full lips. I am so sorry, she said, taking a seat. Mom can be a nightmare sometimes. <laughs> I smiled as I noticed that one of her earrings was a silver trio of stars. Clear real silver, and the other was a large radish, clearly plastic. I see that you got a little distracted, I said, pointing to her left ear. She reached up, confused, but laughed when she saw what I was talking about. God, I'm a mess. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> she laughed, clearly torn about whether to remove the radish. Uh, don't, I said. I like it. It's very dual nature. She rolled her eyes, grinning, and when the waitress came back, we ordered our food and sat around chit-chatting. The people sitting nearby were no longer giving me pitying looks. Quite the contrary. There was more than one guy who couldn't keep from looking back at Sara, and more than one woman who was either angrily elbowing her husband slash date, or openly staring too. Not that such things mattered such to me, but damn. Sara was hot. She was towing the line between movie star and a Greek statue hot, but within all of that was a simplicity. And when she laughed, she shook her head and I realized that I had been staring too. Hey mister, the conversation is over here. <laughs> uh, sorry, I said. I just can't believe that you're actually here somehow. It's all still a, a little surreal to me. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm sure I'll burp or spill fettuccine on myself and ruin the illusion any minute. And as if on cue, the food arrived and we fell to eating. So, your mom okay? Uh, nothing too bad, I hope. And Sara snorted. Oh, she's fine. She shows up anytime she hears through the grapevine that I have a date with a straight and tries to talk me out of it. There's always a handsome sill for an elf prince that she thinks would be a better match. I raised my eyebrow, pleasantly flattered. So, you passed up an elf prince for me. I'm not sure whether to be flattered or to question your judgment. Sara laughed and the sound was high and beautiful. It's never an actual prince. It's always like a noble son or a duke's heir or something. Not that it matters anyway. Just because that shit works out on Bridgerton doesn't mean it does in real life. I want someone real. Someone who doesn't put on airs. That's why I'm talking to you. You seem very genuine. Plus, you're cute. Which is a plus. <laughs> I covered my blush with a sip of water. Well, I think that you're pretty cute too. I was honestly really glad that you texted me back. I was just glad you opened the message. 
I kind of let you hang for a while, something I don't usually do. You kind of came at a turbulent time, if I'm being honest. She said, bending to have another slurp of pasta. That was probably the only reason that I noticed the two of them as they pretended to eat. The two guys who looked like they had escaped from a Sports Illustrated shoot and been poured into three-piece suits. Their blonde hair was fluffy on the top and they looked like a pair of dandelions as they wore their sunglasses inside and pretended to drink water. They had eyes only for Sara, and it was massively hurting their cover as one of them crunched his perfect teeth into a muscle, shell and all. He chewed up the pieces, shards sliding down his throat as I tried not to stare. I won't sugarcoat, Tyler. I've met you at a pretty messy time in my life. My mom is threatening to cut me off if I don't make a choice, the choice she wants, and I've been pretty torn lately. I started to not even message you, to not drag you into this, but I felt a connection with you, something I've never felt on this app before. I know a lot of humans and hybrids use Monster Mash as a way to get a free meal or a lay for the night, but I wanted something more than that. I've always been looking for that spark, the kind of thing mom talks about when I ask her about dad. Mom's had a lot of lovers, like a lot, a lot. But when she talks about dad, she always gets this look on her face that lets me know she still thinks about him sometimes, still misses him sometimes. I was trying to pay attention, but it was kind of hard with the two guys watching us. Is he, um, well, I mean, uh, is he, uh... About ten years ago, he was sick for a while, but he hit it really well. When Mom found him, he was a writer for a travel magazine, and Mom loves nature. Sara said with a roll of her eyes. Doesn't sound like you like your mom too much. I said, try not to make it sound accusing, but likely failing. She's fine, I guess. She just is always trying to push me to her side of things. I lived with Dad most of my life and took care of him while he died, and she just wasn't there. He talked about her all the time, told me she was just busy with her duties, but I always wondered why she didn't come and help him. She could have. It was in her power to do so. But she didn't. She showed up for the funeral, and it was the first time I had seen her in three years. I resented her. But she paid for Dad's old apartment so I could keep living there and gave me an allowance until I got on my feet again. In her own way, I guess she cares. But I just don't feel it. Her kind, though, are always very aloof. By her kind, I asked, glancing at the brutes as one of them bit his fork by mistake and took the prongs off. You mean fairies? And <laughs> Sara snorted. Don't let them hear you say that. They prefer to be called fey, the ones that are called anything at all. And as a changeling, you have to decide if you want to be a fey or a, or a human? And Sara nodded. Pretty much. And your mom wants you to choose fey, it sounds like. Again. Pretty much. I ate at a little pasta while I thought it over, glancing at the two men as they watched us like a pair of crows on a fresh corpse. And I laughed to myself. My mom tells me to do what makes me happy. Seems easy by comparison. It would be nice to hear about a normal home life for a change. Tell me about your mom. Mom, I said, pausing when I realized how little I actually knew about my mother. My whole life had been about being like dad. And it meant that I had taken mom for granted. Mom is a hell of a woman. She raised three kids. She was a great mom. Well, she still is a great mom. From what dad said, she was a great wife too. And they had a really cute story about how they met. And I shared it with her. And I saw her smile as mom found just who she needed in the midst of a bad situation. She was leaning forward on her hands, giving me the amount of attention I didn't think that I ever received before. And as I finished, she called over the waitress to see if we could get a to-go box. I had finished mine amidst our conversation, and as she had her food boxed, I wasn't sure if I had scared her off with such a sappy story or not. Would you like to go for a walk? She asked, her green eyes still fixed on me. The restaurant usually closes about nine, but I don't think I'm ready to go home just yet. There's a lovely park near here if you want to stroll a little. I nodded, glad that I hadn't bored her. And quite the contrary, it seemed. And as I paid the bill and slid my arm through hers and we walked off. The goons had left at some point, but I caught sight of them as we walked out. They were propped behind newspapers, not standing out in the least little bit, and I saw them peek as we came out. Are they gonna mind that we left our cars here? 
I asked as we walked off down the sidewalk. No, I think a lot of couples end up strolling a bit after dinner. The goons strolled behind us, paper still raised, and I couldn't help but peek behind us as she laid her head against my shoulder. She was very warm. Very warm. And her hair smelled faintly of something floral. Maybe even her namesake. She was leaning against me. And God... It had been a long time since someone had been this close to me without expecting anything. But it was extremely hard to focus with the goons following us. And she seemed to notice this, because she looked back suddenly and sighed in disgust. Brutus, Jasper, I've told you three times already to go away. You're making my date uncomfortable. The two of them jumped, their papers falling, before stammering their apologies. But, uh, but princess, the one on the left stated. Here in the real world, it's Sarah. I am princess of nothing. I will never be the princess of anything. Normal people don't need bodyguards. No one is trying to get me. Go away. They seemed torn. The one on the right actually dipping to get his paper like he meant to hide. Sara, or Sarah, whichever one she wanted to be called, I guess I needed to get that figured out, had seemed to be softening a little as she watched them scramble about uncomfortably. Okay, okay, as your princess, I command that you go back to my mother and tell her that you bodyguarded me very well. That will be all for the evening, thank you. Both of them smiled, throwing sloppy salutes and bursting into the air like shooting stars as their clothes flopped to the ground behind them. Sara shook her head at them, turning back to find me with a confused look and about a ton of questions. Bodyguards, she said as though that explained everything. That works every time I stop pretending I can't see them. <laughs> Shall we? I didn't move. So, why do you have bodyguards? And, more importantly, why did they call you princess? <sighs> Sara blew out as she puffed out her cheeks and looked annoyed. Okay, okay, so I technically am a princess, my mom is technically the queen of summer, and I am technically in line for that throne. I'm second in line ever since my older half-sister got sick, and I guess I could ascend, but that's only if I choose Faye and give away my humanity. There, happy? I thought about it, finally nodding slowly as I offered her my arm. Yeah, I guess that explains it all. Wait, aren't you, like, freaked out or anything? My mom is Titania, the Queen of Summer, like, from the Shakespeare play? I shrugged. Well, yeah, but my mom's Catholic, and not everyone's perfect. Sara looked utterly confused, and when she laughed, it sounded warmer <laughs> and more natural. And with that, we strolled into the evening. And whatever happened after that, that's up to your imagination. <laughs> <laughs>